me. All right. Chairman Soto, we're ready to begin. All right, thank you. Um, yes, welcome everyone to this workshop. Um, and uh, Dr. Pace, I believe this um, is this for strategic plan and um, you can take it from here. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chairman Soto, and thank you, members of the board. It's going to be a little bit different than our normal strategic planning workshops. I would love to have everybody here in the room able to share with you the great work that's been done throughout the school year. But with um, the world of technology and our necess necessity to have virtual board meetings, that's just really not practical. I will share with you though, that I am very proud as your superintendent, and I hope that you will feel the same as a board in that despite the challenges that we've experienced over the course of the last couple of months, the team has remained absolutely committed to the priorities that you've established for us in our strategic plan. And while we don't have all of the outcomes that we're able to share with you today, because we haven't had testing, for example, in academic success, I do have great work that I can share with you. And I can tell you this is certainly not my work. This is the work of our leadership team, our directors, our staff members across the district, who take and own their responsibility to help fulfill the priorities that you've established. So you have two documents this morning that are uploaded to the agenda, and some of you have them in print. One is the PowerPoint that Ruben will walk through with us and that I will highlight some of the key accomplishments for each particular goal. And then we've also prepared a strategic plan summary that for those of you who are in the building, we'll make sure that you get today, and all the others you will find it in your mailbox so that you can look through Find just a reminder of any other important details that have occurred throughout the year. As we move through each goal, I'm anxious to hear um, your feedback, your suggestions, and also then any information that you may want to share with, with me and the team about what you see happening next. While we did do a full comprehensive rewrite of our strategic plan last year so that we have our three-year plan in place, this is the end of, of year one of that plan, we do know that each year we look at our strategies, we look at our outcomes, and we make specific tweaks based on things that we've accomplished and things that we might be different. So my team will be busy taking notes um, for anything that you might want to provide as direction for us as we move forward. So Ruben, we'll start with goal number one, academic success. This first page shows the four key strike key strategies that we outlined for you at the beginning of last August. Number one was about, number 1A was about a guaranteed and viable curriculum, making sure that we had consistency across the district. The second was leveraging high yield strategies, and we narrowed that down to things that aligned with our teacher evaluation system, but that also reflect the research that says these are things that help kids really deeply engage in learning, and that's read, write, talk, and solve. 1C really talks about what are we doing to fill in the gaps? Are those intentional strategies to support our ELL learners, our ESC learners, and others who might be challenged? And um, this will certainly be a focus for us as we return to school in August. And then finally, because acceleration remains a key priority for this district, making sure that our students are work and college ready, um, we have 1D, which talks about the things that would lead students to college career and life success. The next page talks about some specific highlights that we've been able to accomplish this particular school year. I'm very pleased to say that we could not have had a, a better foundation for a very quick week and a half implementation and transition to digital learning had we not had the work that we had done in our solid curriculum unit plans last summer and throughout the school year to really get to that guaranteed and viable curriculum. It really made standing up the distance learning program um, easier than it might otherwise would have been. And overall, I'm proud to report that we had a 94% engagement. Just this last week, our research and evaluation team completed a survey, an evaluation of our digital learning from the perspective of our teachers. I'm pleased to say that 35% of the teachers in the district responded to the survey. And of those, 66% reported that they had a positive either very positive or somewhat positive experience with digital teaching. So, you know, in, in the fact that we had to do it in a week and a half, I just couldn't be more proud of, of the work that our teachers and staff members did. 
I also am pleased to say that 79% of the teachers who responded to the survey said they followed exactly or almost exactly the instructional continuity plan or our curriculum unit plans. So that really gets to the heart of both 1A, our guaranteed and viable curriculum, and also 1B, the read, write, talk, and solve. Obviously, with digital learning, talking and solving was a little bit more challenging for our students and, and our teachers to engage in, but we made sure that the activities and lessons and tasks in our instructional continuity plan were designed to not just keep kids busy, but to fill in the gaps and keep kids moving forward in the, in the curriculum, and also to make sure that students were reading and writing text, developing those critical communication and language skills. Um, in order to make all of this happen, our district technology teams and our school teams gave out over 17,419 laptops, along with 1,700 hotspots to make sure that we were able to meet student needs as best we could for digital learning. And based on some projections that, again, our research and evaluation team was able to do, we do believe that we were making progress in both ELA and math. And uh, we would anticipate at least a 1% increase in proficiency for ELA and a 4% increase in our math level achievements had we completed our state testing this year. I will tell you that that's certainly something that we're continuing to look at. The number one criteria that we're able to use in that kind of an analysis without end of year data is prior year performance. And we're unable to capture what we've been able to do in terms of learning gains this year. But one of the other things that we plan to do as far as a next step already is that in August, we will have a baseline assessment in reading, math, and science for all of our students in grades K through 10, so that we know exactly where kids are, what the gaps are, and what we need to um, do to help get kids accelerated and on track to learning. A couple of other key academic success progress reports that I wanted to share with you. As you know, we continue to push GOT College, and a number, a primary indicator of whether or not our students are planning to go on to college is their completion as a family of the FAFSA, or the Federal Financial Aid Application. This year, we had uh, Tohopa Galaga High School, who was recognized as the most improved large high school. Paths was the most improved in the state for one in the smaller high school category. And our district also was recognized as a most improved overall in the 2020 FAFSA challenge. And then St. Cloud High overall was recognized as just an outstanding completer for those FAFSA applications. So we're very, very hopeful and positive that our students were on track to continue their pursuit of college and career opportunities in post-secondary education based on their completion of the FAFSA. And then finally, as you know, a significant goal for us has been to increase our college acceleration opportunities. Advanced placement testing is still going on. We weren't able to do IB testing this year. Um, our industry certification testing is just winding down, but we know for a fact that for our dual enrollment students, we had a significant increase in both enrollment in the spring and more importantly, even more students this year than ever, 114 in 2020 were on track to earn both their AA degree with their high school diploma. So that's that free two year college application, college um, completion that's in our, our high school graduates pocket that leads them right on into the next piece. And if you remember the year I became superintendent back in 2015, 16, I believe we had 11 um, AA degrees with their high school diplomas. So significant improvements there. So overall, while we don't have the wealth of data that we typically have at this time of the year to report, I'm very, very proud that we did not lose sight of moving kids forward in terms of academic success. And I'm eager to hear any comments, feedback, or questions that you may have at this point for goal one. So board, does any, anyone want to um... On goal one, anyone has any comments? Terry, I'm sorry, I see your hand. Ms. Castillo? Um, Dr. Pace, I know that I think I may have asked this before, maybe last or seen any information about this. Typically with goal uh, D, 1D, uh, acceleration of opportunities for students that would lead them to college. Do we have or have we been keeping track of those students who have graduated from um, the district and then compared what their completion rates were for post-secondary education? One of the challenges with that data at the state level, Terry, 
is that um, it is lag data. So it takes two years before we get that information back from the year before. However, we are able to better track now with the college clearinghouse piece of that. Kind of follow up and keep that stuff going, but I will be certain that we get some information back to you for that. I will tell you that the initial reports of that high school piece show that our students who do go on to college are successful in their freshman year at a higher percentage than some of our comparison districts, but we still aren't there yet in terms of the full got college number, but we've significantly increased in terms of the number of students who are going. We also this year weren't able to, to publicly ce celebrate our um, top 100 colleges and university acceptances like we always have before. We did do some work during senior week for the um, virtual celebrations, and I'll be sure to get those numbers from Mr. Cook for you as well. All right. Thank you, Ms. Castillo. Um, Mr. Booth, I see your hand. Yes, Mr. Seto, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Hey, thank you, Chairman. Uh, I just wanted to say, uh, I don't have it, much to discuss. I just wanted to say thank you to the team and to everyone who, uh, you know, works for the superintendent there at the district and, and the great work that they have done. Uh, you know, this is our number one priority is academic, academic achievement. And uh, I just wanted to say thank you and, and um, glad we're headed in the right direction. And that's all, Mr. Chairman. Thanks to Mr. Booth and Mr. Thacker, good morning. Good morning. And uh, I actually, I was gonna pretty much say the same thing that, uh, that Mr. Booth just said, but I just wanna thank uh, Deborah and I know it's all your team, uh, team puts puts all this work in to get this done and achieved. And I think uh, I'm very proud of what you just presented here. And I'm very proud of the effort everybody made to um, upend themselves and uh, figure out how to do the distance learning. And I know some struggled. I know it was easier for others, but uh, everybody I believe everybody did the best they could. And that's uh, I think Mr. Booth talked about that at one of our meetings. Just do the best you can with this and uh, everything will be okay. And I think uh, we kind of proved that. Just one uh, sort of a technical question. The 1700 or 17,000 laptops that we got out, did we, were we able to, is that 100% of the needs that there were or did we run out of laptops or what kind of happened there? I'm just curious if, if we. We gave, we were able to honor every request that came in for laptops. Okay. Whether or not we that truly met the full need because Wi Fi is the other challenge that folks are having and the hotspots from T Mobile work in some neighborhoods and areas of the county were better than others. But we never ever had to turn a child away or a family away who asked for a laptop device. Okay, that's great news. That's what I was hoping. I know there could be people that didn't ask, but it's, I think that's uh, a tribute that we were able to meeting the needs of 17,000 kids is pretty impressive, I think. Particularly because remember, as a district, we're not in a one to one capacity other than at Neo City and Discovery through this year. So it was a tremendous effort and, and the team never stopped um, scavenging class tops or um, classrooms and all kinds of things to get the devices that we need, get them ready and, and able to issue to kids. And now we're working on getting them back and getting them cleaned up so we can talk about what August looks like. I will also share with the board and, and our and our community. I'm very, very excited about the work. Uh, back to school and back to learning task force are doing. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But in particular, we do have summer um, bridge programs that are virtual throughout the month of June that we are starting to issue. We have seniors who are still working toward meeting graduation requirements virtually through Edge Annuity, and they can do that right up until our planned graduations in July. And we have teachers who are on track to support their learning as we move throughout the summer. And we hope to have by the end of June a solid plan for what back to school looks like, which will include a key focus on back to learning. What are we going to do to fill in the gaps, assess where kids are, and keep them moving forward in terms of their academic progression, despite the challenges that we've had over the last couple of months? Great. And, and I, I did want to do it just real quick, and then I'm done. A special shout out to all of our IT folks that. Uh, it's great that we can get out 17,000 laptops if, if nothing works in our system and nothing works for our teachers, we don't get anywhere. So uh, I know they did a great job and I know it was extremely hard, a uh, little bumpy start, but uh, really appreciate everything they did. So and that's all I've got, Chairman Soto. Um, very well said, Mr. Thacker. I, Mr. Booth, 
if you wanted to get another opportunity to speak a comment on this topic. I, I, I really didn't, but I will say this. Um, don't forget also, because I have this struggle personally, um, our kids who live outside the city limits, uh, down in the woods like I do, our kids down in Keenansville and, and Holy Paul and, and, and Deer Park and, and Deseret Ranches, um, that was one of the biggest struggles I had personally because I have satellite internet and we blew through that data with three kids and a teacher at home uh, and had some struggles at the end, actually had a struggle communicating at one of the school board meetings because of my limited connectivity. So um, a lot of folks out there really worked hard to try to to try to get all this done. And, and that's why also I was kept, kept reminding folks just to do the best they can, teachers and students. And I think they did. So now my hand is lowered. <laughs> well said, Mr. Booth. I, I would like to welcome and, and recognize Mr. Um, Tim Weiss, sir. Good morning, Chairman. Board, how are you? I think everyone is well. The silence means good. Very good. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. And, um, um, and um, Mr. Weiss, if you allow me, I just want to make a quick comment and then hand it um, back to you. Um, one of the things is that that I am um, that I'm very well aware is, of course, all of the districts, um, you know, their approach to everything that's going on with the um, with the with the pandemic, with the social distancing, having to juggle so many different um, agendas. But the agenda that's most important is to protect our our community and to way to continue um, doing what we do, which is to educate our students, and they've done a fabulous job. But by the same time, I just I just want to say that I've seen incredible support on the part of of the school of a lot of our leaders around this county. But in particular, I want to say to the school board um, of directors us, that each and every one of you has always been supportive and provided so many different insights from so many different disciplines to help this be successful. And at least from where I'm at, I, 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 I say that it has been successful. And while there ha may have been some rough spots here and there due to the novelty of what we're dealing with, um, we've been able to handle it. And there are some things on the horizon that we're still trying to figure out, but my confidence in this school district and in this board cannot be higher. I really, I really sincerely say that. And so I, um, I commend everyone. Mr. Weissire. Thank you, Chairman. You know, I just want to start by saying, um, you know, the, this conversation today is so incredibly important because what I think we don't want to lose, and I know we haven't as a board, and I know the people on this call and our team hasn't, but what we don't want to lose sight of is the fact that there has been an entire year of learning and instruction taking place and a year of growth that's taken place. And the reason I mention that is because because we've lived in the last two or three months in this environment of COVID-19 and uh, distance learning and social distancing and all these new nuances that we refer to, uh, the, the assumption for some, not here, but the assumption for some might be to just kind of, well, that year passed and let's just move on and let's not talk about it. Um, but what I know to be very true is that prior to COVID-19, our, our teams and our staff were working diligently to help students learn and grow. Uh, that professional development was happening at all levels of the district to ensure that our, our customer service initiatives, uh, growth plans, development of quality instruction, um, you know, our professional learning communities, all those things were taking place with fidelity across the district. And then we move into the season of uh, distance learning and learning still continued, although it was different and maybe it was a little bit more challenging. And as Mr. Booth pointed out, there were difficulties with access to internet. And as the superintendent was mentioning, you know, trying to get as many devices and hotspots in the hands of many people as possible, uh, but progress was still being made. And so this is such an important conversation for us to say, uh, what have we accomplished? What measurements and be benchmarks can we look at to understand where we've achieved success? Are there gaps and opportunities for us to build upon and how it is that we can lay out the best plan possible for the year to come? And then Chairman, I'll just end by um, both thanking and affirming, um, thanking you for your comment um, and then affirming that I believe it to be very true as well. 
Um, I've said many times privately and publicly how proud I am to work with this board and the members that make up this board. Um, you guys truly are caring, committed, competent, um, and dedicated individuals um, that I not only respect professionally, but personally, and I value the relationships that we all share. Um, and that goes beyond the dais to uh, the superintendent, the leadership team, and the staff that we work with in this district. Uh, being a part of this institution has truly been one of the many highlights of, of my life, and I'm proud to be a part of it. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Weissire. Um, Dr. Pace, I believe that we are now ready to proceed to your second vote. Thank you very much, members of the board, and, and thank you again, Chairman Soto. I, I will share with you that in times like this, when, when the going gets a little bit tough, I couldn't be more proud and more blessed to have such a supportive board um, who really allows us to stay focused on the work, doesn't let us forget our focus on the work, but also recognizes and leads from a sense of calmness and, and positivity that is, is certainly uh, makes my job a whole lot easier. So thanks to all of you. All right, so that brings us then into goal two, talent management. And this is about attracting our quality candidates to decrease employee vacancies, provide high quality professional learning aligned to individual organizational needs, and also then obviously to try to work really, really hard to reduce our turnover. I will tell you that we have some good news to report in this category, at least as it stands right now, based on um, there are always some good things to come out of, of any crisis. And certainly part of that has been from goal one, obviously the fact that the strength of our curriculum unit plans and that guaranteed viable curriculum really made a difference in helping us ease into digital learning. And in goal two, the fact that we um, got some waivers for certification exams is allowing us to bring back a large portion of our employees who are working hard in the classroom and doing a good job for us, but who may not have yet been able to complete their certification tests. So our non-renewal rate is now 4.12% as compared to almost 10% the previous school year. I also will share with you that today and tomorrow we have a very exciting multicultural conference so that we're continuing our professional learning, just like learning never stopped for students during the course of the pandemic and the last quarter of the school year. Learning isn't going to stop for adults this summer. We have over 700 participants um, with a focus on what's good for multicultural education, but more importantly, what's good for all kids in terms of learning and growing. This is in partnership with UCF and other district departments. Our multicultural education department has done just a fabulous job putting that together today and tomorrow. I'm also pleased to share that our professional development department has sought and gained approval this year for our reading endorsement program. Uh, as well as a revised ESOL endorsement program and a newly adopted autism spectrum disorder endorsement program, which are really huge bonuses for teachers who come into our district and who may still need to add those things to their certificate because they can take the coursework free uh, um, within our district with peers and have support from others in the district to achieve those essential certification requirements during the course of their first couple of years with us. So we're super excited about that. In addition, the PD department, it's not listed on your PowerPoint or in your handout, but it is um, another part of that, is that we've also gotten approval for an alternative certification program that we will be able to offer in-house within the district. So trying to do a lot um, to bring teachers in, train them and help to recruit them. And then finally, we're continuing to make great progress with our um, TSL grant and our work with the new teacher center under Mackenzie Bertram and now Megan Derricks and others at the district office. And 92.5% of our teachers with zero to five years of experience in our 19 high need schools have been offered um, contracts for the upcoming school year. That means they have met their performance challenges and they've expressed a desire to come back and stay in our schools. That's an improvement for, of 7% over last year's retention in our mentoring program. So we're continuing to see good steady progress there. Um, the grant renewal has been submitted to the Federal Department of Education. We are eligible for years four and five. However, they are still making some changes and tweaks in that program and reducing the amount of dollars available. But we're very, very hopeful that we'll, we'll be able to sustain and support this important training of our new teacher center program. One of the standout qualities of the new teacher center work with our district and with other districts as well is that they really strive to build internal capacity and kind of work their way out of a job. 
So as we move into year three of our partnership with them, uh, Mackenzie Bertram and Heidi and Liz will both become fully trained as trainers through the course of this next year so that they can use the same tools to train others. So that's an important part of any type of professional learning that programs that we like to implement in that they're not going to have to be cost bearing forever and ever and ever. They can instead build that internal capacity that we can carry on and, and use as we move forward. So those are really some of the key highlights from our talent management goal two. Are there any questions or comments or feedback from the board or suggestions perhaps about what's next? Um, I can't find my little hand. Oh, here it is. <laughs> or, Terry, I, I, if you don't have a hand, then say <laughs> I know I'm trying to be respectful. Um, to find you anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Just um, Dr. Pace, in regards to the autism spectrum disorder endorsement program, is that new this year? Because I don't think, and and that's statewide. Is that? That's just for us in the district. Other districts can apply for it, but our yeah. district in particular has done it. It will start in August. It's a brand new program because for our autism spectrum teachers, not only do they have to have the exceptional student education certification, there's a whole nother panel of coursework that they have to have in order to be fully certified for ASD teachers. And so what was happening is we were getting exceptional student education teachers who mm -hmm. were willing to go into those ASD classrooms, but then they, after they've been out of field for two years, they can no longer continue in that role without earning their endorsement. So this will allow our teachers to take those endorsement classes here within the district. Um, they won't have to travel to UCF or pay money for classes elsewhere so that they can gain those important skills and experiences and add that to, to their sort of sort of certificates. Got it. Perfect. Thank you so much. There are no other questions or comments. I will also share with you that the team is currently working on, oh, Mr. Weissart's hands, is currently working on plans for professional learning for the month of July. That will be based on revisions to our curriculum unit plans that will include a digital component should we have to pivot again during the course of the year to full-time digital learning, as well as then some work with our M MITD team, tech team, um, the, the green shirts about what are some best practices for tech learning based on what we've learned from these last couple of months in terms of setting up a template for teams that would be consistent across teachers across the district. Like I said, just some things that we weren't able to do in, in a week and a half of an implementation plan, that, but that should we have to move forward or even should we desire to move forward to offer as an option digital learning, we'll be able to do it far more effectively and consistently across the district. Thank you. My comment, Superintendent, um, is just making sure that um, we're doing everything we can. I, I want to know <clears throat> kind of what are those big hairy goals, if you will, right? The, the ideas in the area of talent management that will help ensure that we're moving the needle as much as possible. Um, where the gaps, I don't have to have these answers right now, by the way, this is just kind of high level, uh, where the gaps are. So as we looked at what happened last year, where do we maybe miss the mark and where are some things that didn't happen the way we maybe would have wanted them to, not regarded to COVID in general. Um, and then also where are the things that you say, look, if I had everything my way, this is exactly what I would be doing. Um, but I know that I don't have the resources for that. I think it's important in these conversations uh, for the board to not just be thinking about what have we done, where are we, and where we might be tomorrow, but what are the things that we need to be thinking about that are are beyond um, our ability to achieve tomorrow, at least on the surface, what we might initially think, but are truly those big um, ideas that we can start to think long term and then start working backwards to uh, put a plan in place to make sure it happens. That, you know, talent management is obviously, I mean, everything we do is important. I know that, but this is one of those areas that as much as we can do to support our uh, staff at all levels um, to elevate um, the profession, the work, uh, the impact, and the difference that they make, the better off everything else is. And so, I know I'm preaching to the choir, but that's something that at, at some point I would like us to sit and have just a really big, robust conversation on about, 
let's just throw the, all the big ideas on the table, talk about it, and then say, look, this is what we would do, but we can't afford to do it. Okay, that's fine. Now let's put that on hold and let's start working back to figure out when can we start to phase that in. And then where are the gaps? Like, hey, look, we should be hitting this mark and we're not, and, and we're not hitting it because of this or uh, a staff improvement we need to make or a funding issue we ran into or a structural component that exists within the district. And what you alluded to with teams is is a good example. There's a, an area that you guys identify like, hey, we can get better at this, we can improve upon that. So I just don't want, um, I just don't want the conversation to end with what we've done and where we are, but I want us to really be thinking big and bold and beyond. A couple of other things, and, and I certainly agree with you, Mr. Mr. Weissar. Two other positives I think that have come out of the last couple of months is number one, um, across the country, uh, the community has a greater appreciation for the amazing work that our teachers do each and every day in the classroom. That is a shift that I know has been a priority for you as a board since I became your superintendent, and we started a community engagement goal. Um, goal four to really talk about what we could do to change the perception of education and educators here in Osceola County, but it's, I think, even bigger than that. Another positive that has come out of this experience has been the professional collaboration among teachers. We've been talking about professional learning communities working toward high quality professional learning community experiences for years. Um, we saw a tremendous amount of progress and growth in that area through the digital EPLCs. Um, as teachers saw that this work is so much easier when we are doing it together. Two areas of concern that I still have in the tenant, in the talent management field. Oh, I'm sorry, one more positive. We have 100 less vacancies today than we did at the same time a year ago. So I think that's a key piece. Part of it is because we've really tightened our allocations due to being, you know, fiscal restraint and, and what we're talking about or we'll talk about in goal three. But another piece of it is that we are able to renew more of our teachers and we want to hold on to them and encourage them to be here. But that still leaves the fact that there's a tremendous um, gap in terms of the number of teachers that are needed across the country, across the state, across Central Florida to fill classroom vacancies and the students who are graduation, graduating from education programs or the young people who are choosing to go into education as a career. What can we continue to do to try to fill that gap, to try to help people see that this is not only a viable option as an employment opportunity, but a great one that's rewarding in, in so many different ways. Um, our grow your own programs in our high school level continue. I think we can strengthen our curriculum there. We are going to continue to allow some of our peer professionals who need to perhaps take a, a semester to complete their internships because they're pursuing their education degrees to do that while remaining on the job and fully employed with us if in an alternative leave status in order to help get those people on board and, and ready to take over classrooms themselves, but there's still a gap there and I don't yet have the answer to help fill that in. So I would, I would love a deeper conversation with the board uh, about that. Thank you, Doc. I just wanna give an opportunity to Mr. Thacker. I, I, uh, his hands was up. I just want to I just want to kind of pile on what Tim was saying because I think it is extremely important and I know really with the budget meeting we've got coming up or the workshop this afternoon um, I guess what I'm hopeful of is and I think this is one of the things Tim was really talking about is the board I think really needs to know the needs and I want to hear the needs whether we have the money for them or not and we can I think as a board can help uh, make choices but I, what I don't want is we have a big need and we never hear about it because everybody's decided we can't afford it, we don't have the money or whatever. So I think Tim was right on the mark with that. And I just, I wanna make sure, uh, Dr. Pace, you and your team keep that in mind as we go, not just through the strategic plan, but through the uh, budget workshop this afternoon. Excellent. Um, Ms. Castillo, then, um, then Mr. Weissire. Terry, you have the floor? Yeah, thank you. Uh, Dr. Pace, I think towards the end of the presentation of this goal, you mentioned um, an additional alternative certification program. Is that a certification program that's in-house? I don't think that I was going to ask about it and I totally forgot. Can you please give me a little bit more information about that? Yeah, there are professional education competency courses that individuals who are coming from alternative careers, maybe they have a four year degree, but it might be in math or engineering or something like that have to complete in order to get their professional certificate. They have three years to do so. The typical route is to take classes um, through one of our local colleges or universities. There are some online opportunities to do that, but we're now going to be able to offer that kind of a program in house as well. 
Okay, so from start to finish, our alternative certification teachers can go ahead and complete everything right here in the we'll district. Have an option within our program. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Is that an additional cost to them, or is that something we're offering? It, some of it will be fee based, but significantly less about half what they would pay if they were taking college and university courses. Yeah, it's a huge win, I think. Well, and those are things that I think, too, that I know we can do a better job of communicating during our recruitment efforts, because those are things that kind of help us stand above others in terms of the rich professional learning that we do offer here in this district at very little cost to our staff. Thank you, Ms. Castillo. Before I call um, on Mr. Weissire, Dr. Pace, what you just, yes, descri what you just described, is that, is that some, something that's recent? Yes, that's just been in the last couple of months as well that we got approval for that. I will have um, Justin Ravel and Janice provide some additional information to the board about that. Okay. Um, simply amazing. And, and I agree with Ms. Castillo. I think that this is an incredible milestone to be for a school district, for our school district, to be able to offer that. And I think it's going to be very helpful. I, I mean, the the probabilities for for just incredible outcomes and staff um, cannot be overstated. I mean, just, just also with what I've known about public education. Congratulations, by the way. Mr. Weissire. Team effort. Very well done. Mr. Weissire, you have the floor. Yeah, mine is simply just to say, Mr. Thacker, thank you. And what you said is exactly what I was thinking. So we're 100 percent on the same page. Excellent. All right. On that, on that vein, if you don't mind, sir, before we go on to goal three, I will share with you that, you know, the last bullet talks about our um, zero to five teachers and the fact that we're able to re to retain them at a greater rate through our TSL grant, through our mentoring program. There is the potential that that could be a significant cost. Um, I have already decided that we would commit funds to the new teacher center training. We're into year three. This is the final year to build our internal capacity and to walk away from that, I think, would be silly. But then there are also the mentor positions. Our teachers who spend half a day with kids in the classroom and then half a day mentoring their peers. That um, right now the, the cost for the district share is about $600,000. Should we not get funding from um, the federal government for the grant, that could be an additional cost. But I will tell you that we have outcomes that show it is improving outcomes for kids, as well as improving the retention of teachers and improving satisfaction of both the mentors who are gaining this leadership within their schools and, and getting the reward and the value of working with peers and helping them be successful, but then also our mentees who have reported consistently that they do feel more supported and better able to serve kids' needs. Um, so I, I think that's a program that you may hear I come back to you to say, this is a need that I think we should really try to prioritize and fund if we're not able to get the grant funds moving forward for years four and five. Well, really briefly on to see if there's any feedback from, from your final comments on this in this goal. And I see none. Dr. Pace, can you take us to goal three? Sure. Goal three is our fiscal responsibility goal. Um, we want to continue to work to improve our efficiency of operations. We want to uh, have energy consumption and waste management costs as an overall plan reduction. And then obviously our health care program. We've done a lot of work on that over the last couple of months. And I know that many of you are well versed in that, but I do want to share just a few additional highlights. Keep in mind that um, this goal also encompasses the work that we're doing in facilities and of course maintenance and everywhere else, even though it may not have a specific strategy, it's become our way of work to continue to use our sales tax dollars and our impact fee dollars and all of our capital investment dollars um, efficiently and effectively to meet the needs of our kids and, and our buildings. So one of the key areas that we identified as a way to improve efficiency is through timekeeping. Um, as you know, we had some audit findings uh, related to timekeeping procedures and practices. We've had very complex, inconsistent pre procedures across the district. And so that is something that we have been working um, with GFOA, the Greater Finance uh, Something Alliance, um, to help us come up with some better procedures. And we're moving to Kronos Clocks and Kronos Web Entry for all of our district departments starting July 1st, 2020. In addition, though, to just clocking in or logging in with Kronos Web Entry, we have improved procedures that have eliminated some of the paper transfer for our timekeepers in the schools, paper going back and forth through the courier. Um, that's an area where we want to potentially add 
uh, strategy for next year is to look at what else we can do to reduce our reliance on paper. You know, several years ago, the board went to direct deposit, which means we're not printing checks all the time. Even just we've narrowed this year the, the courier service down to three days a week, and we think that we could potentially narrow that even further, saving in both gas and personnel time and allowing them to do some other things. Uh, Mark Cavaney and Shane Acree and the entire team in maintenance has done just a tremendous job in helping us with the utility cost avoidance. Um, this shows a utility cost avoidance of about $1.2 million or almost 12%. The most recent estimate, if you look at the total for utility cost avoidance, um, an energy bill adjustment at OXA, which was almost $130,000 based on a meter that was being read that Shane and his team have found, almost $250,000 in rebates from our utility companies based on improvements in HVAC units um, and lighting, and then waste stream cost avoidance, we're going to have saved over $2.2 million during the course of the year. Now, remember, that's not free money. Much of it we had budgeted ahead of time, but this is significantly over what we budgeted. And obviously part of that is a result of the fact that we were shut down for you know, the last nine weeks of the school year, but we were well on track to, to more than meet our goal, to about double our goal even before the shutdown. So it's been a tremendous effort to improve um, our efficiency, improve our monitoring, look at the reporting to really be able to capture those dollars and then potentially route them back into operational savings. I will tell you that this year it's been instrumental in helping us to balance the budget. In addition, we've identified enterprise-wide software expenses that are allowable as a transfer into capital uh, for about a $2 million, $2 million savings for the operational budget. We'll talk about that more this afternoon in our budget workshop. As you know, we were able to implement direct contracts to improve op opportunities for our employees and their, mem and their family members to get high quality imaging services at a lower cost for both them and the district, as well as international pharmacy savings so that they're paying no copays and the district is saving an overall cost for avoidance that's over $400,000 now. And I also wanted to highlight again, I think sometimes we lose sight of the fact that at project closeout, our teams are, are putting money back into the capital based on savings that they've been able to generate. Um, while we have absolutely beautiful facilities at both Harmony Middle and Neo City Academy, both of those schools came in at a cost per student station less, again, than the state average, which I know has been direction from the board. We don't intend to do anything different, but you can see that we are able to build beautiful schools with all of the, the amenities that we like to provide for our students and keep that cost per student station um, below that state maximum. So that's information for you there as well. And that's all I have to share with you at this time. I know we've talked a lot already about health insurance contracts and those types of things, and we have our budget workshop this afternoon. Excellent. Uh, Mr. Weissire, at the floor. Thank you. Yeah, just this is such an incredibly important that, you know, we know that there's a very key and very basic concept within business or life, uh, which is if you want to increase your bottom line, you have two options. You either increase revenue or you reduce expenses. And this board has continued and continued to try to find ways to increase our revenue through our legislative efforts and through uh, looking at different sources that we can bring in through marketing dollars or otherwise. And we've done everything. We as innovative as we can. And so that then brings us to the importance of the second side of that equation, which is reducing expenses. Um, and all of that is done for the sole purpose of ensuring that we can allocate as much money as possible for the benefit of our students and our staff and for our institution as a whole. So um, I just don't want to miss uh, commenting on this slide and the importance of it for us as an organization. And sometimes people don't understand uh, why we're making some of these difficult decisions and why we're doing some of the things that we're doing. Uh, but these are marked results that we're looking at on the screen that have happened by way of uh, courage on behalf of the board, willingness on behalf of the superintendent, and diligence on behalf of our staff to make sure that these things have been implemented. So uh, this is one of many very important components of what we've been working to achieve. And I'm, I'm grateful to see the successes that we've achieved thus far and what we'll continue to do in the future. Thank you, Mr. Weissire. Mr. Booth? Yes, Mr. Chairman, um, I think Mr. Weissire 100% agree with everything that he said, and I appreciate that. I, I just would add, you know, it, it is the board. 
if not the most important, it's right there, 1A, 1B, um, the stewardship of taxpayers. Uh, to be a part of this board uh, and so proud of our superintendent, her team's work, you know, from the direction of the board uh, to be extremely fiscally responsible. So congratulations again, Dr. Pace, to your team. And, and for because uh, congratulations to us as a board, because this is one of our most important, if not our most important duties, is our search for the, the taxpayer. Thank you, Mr. Booth. Um, I don't see any other hands. Um, so if we are ready for goal number four. Great. Thank you, Chairman Soto. I appreciate that. Um, as you know, goal four is our community engagement and in governance goal. Um, it's about educating our parents and providing information to help them support their children's education at home and at school. It's about providing high quality and promoting high quality educational choice opportunities. It's about that positive and proactive communication of information. And then also our general improvement initiative of stock takes, professional learning communities, our work here with the strategic plan all comes back into how do we move that good to great needle every day in every bit of work that we do. I have to tell you that um, during a crisis, goal four, plays an even more important role than ever before. And I couldn't be more proud of the communication outreach that we've done and also the foundation that we built so that we have that trust and those open communication channels with our staff members, with our families, with our community to keep us moving throughout this entire process. So I'm um, just starting with a few of the highlights. We did have an amazing choice fair this year with over 5,000 participants. Um, it was uh, incredibly, Incredibly crowded. I'm very glad that it happened back in the fall before COVID-19 because I, I can't really imagine what a virtual choice fair would have had to look like, but our schools did a great job. We had tremendous um, outpouring from the community. And more importantly, 764 new FTE conversions. So those are students who were not previously in our enrolled in our school. We had a lot of new kindergarten families or, or families who will have new kindergarten students who took the opportunity to go ahead and do their choice application. We're already getting them registered and ready to start school in August, as well as others from home school, from charter school, from private school, from outside the community who wanted to take advantage of the programs that we were able to promote through our choice fair. And we continue to work hard with that through Dr. Rafowski's um, efforts. As you know, she has uh, brought forward a motion and you approved it a, a couple of board meetings ago to rebrand our district choice program. We now have a, the Department of Educational Choices and Innovation, and she has been working with Dana's team to develop a SPARK project plan to really look at what we continue to do to market and, and improve positive perceptions of our district managed schools throughout the district. We also significantly were able to reduce the number of students being scheduled in classes with Florida Virtual School from first semester. Keep in mind that this is just simply lost FTE when they choose to enroll in the same course that they could offer have at Osceola Virtual School through Florida Virtual School. And that went from almost 3,000 first semester to less than 400 in second semester. So that's a considerable savings in terms of FTE and it's something that we hope to build on as we move forward with school in August and know that some people will still have some concerns about their health and may want to choose a, a purely virtual option as opposed to even a blended option. I also wanna say that despite our challenges during um, COVID-19, we had tremendous participation and excitement about the district's virtual teacher appreciation and senior week programs. Um, they went very, very well. And again, we've tried to keep that communication opening, open through videos, through our website and everything else that we can do to try to keep, keep those communication lines open. Um, we are bringing together as a next step, our MTSS, our professional learning communities and the stock take process all under the same umbrella of school improvement. They really go together. It's about looking at what are we needing to meet student needs through MTSS, how are teachers working collaboratively to meet those individual needs through PLCs, and how our schools continue to look at both targeted identified needs as well as the overall school and district needs through school improvement to keep us again moving along that good to great um, momentum. And then, of course, as you know, and are well versed, we have our back to school and back to learning task forces that are underway, and we hope to have plans for both of those for your review by the end of June. 
Excellent. Um, Mr. Booth, you have your hand. Um, I will say this. Um, I meant to actually say this up front in, in academic, but I think this is a good spot for it because it is all about community engagement. I just want to make kind of a pre um, to a big announcement. Yeah, dot all the I's and cross all the T's, but because of our community partnership with the Desert Ranches, um, we've got a huge, huge announcement soon um, the program on a Harmony Heights. I'm sure we'll figure out a, uh, to do a, you know, maybe big as we move forward, but um, this is a good place uh, to say that in community engagement. Well, thank you, Mr. Booth. Oh, sorry, you. Mr. Chairman, I guess uh, you guys had a hard time hearing me. I, I, is it better now or, or not? Actually, I, yeah, I, I used some parts there. Um, just the end. I don't know. I don't know. No, I, I think I got it. I think I got it all in there. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in a, in, a, in a questionable service area, so. <laughs> wanted to say thank you to Deseret Ranches, and we've got a big announcement coming soon. That was it. Oh, all right. Um, I'm just going to go down the list. Um, uh, Ms. Castillo, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. First, um, congratulations to everybody with um, the community engagement. I think that we do a really, we are doing a really good job of communicating with our community, not just when things are going great, but also when we need their help in order to um kind of move forward specifically i'm talking about our recent COVID 19 crisis i think that the community was really appreciative of all of the communications that we were putting out and it really helped them to kind of stay focused on what they needed to do i do have um i don't know if it's a question or just kind of a, a comment with regards to 4a um, i love that we're providing parents and caretakers opportunities to acquire information and knowledge can we think as a board, as a district of ways, not only to provide information, but also to, um, I guess, gain their, their buy-in and, and, and partnership? I think um, the, the more, that, you know, the older I get, the, um, the more experience I have as a mom, and the more experience that I have on this board, as well as in the corporate world, I am coming to understand that we can't have a community of people who are well educated without the buy in of our of our parents and caretakers. So how can we move from just here are some amazing programs, some incredible information that you can participate in? How can we move that to partnership with our community? I um, don't know if you even have thoughts. I have thoughts, but very preliminary I, thoughts. <laughs> I'm going to ask, certainly, I'm gonna ask I, Mr. Weissire, I'm going to just put, put him on hold. He's got the hands next. But Dr. Pace, do you want at this point? Sure. Thank you, Chairman Soto. Um, and, and certainly, Ms. Kasuyu, this is a part of this workshop experience is to give you a chance to share some of those important thoughts with you. I did not include our highlights from the work that our special programs team had done to expand the Mommy and Me and Born to Read or Learn to Read programs because we'd already reported that to all of you in January. And obviously, a lot of that work had to slow down, um, you know, once we hit March. But even our homework diners are really about trying to build that partnership, helping parents better understand how to come with their kiddos to school, develop that relationship of trust to help them understand how they can help their kids. Um, I know that, you know, there are a lot of parents who were overwhelmed during these last couple of months trying to work at home, trying to help support their kids' learnings, and there is sometimes that feeling of frustration. One of the disappointments that we've had has been the lack of, of engagement with our smart bus. You know, we've rolled it out several times to neighborhoods where we know the need is real, and we have a certain number of students who are coming, but we know we're missing some of those. So any ideas that you have or that we can think of over these next um, few weeks to maybe tweak our strategic plan activities moving forward, we are absolutely open to, because I totally agree. 
this has to be a partnership that comes back to our vision statement of working with parents, with the community, with the school district and with our stakeholders to really, truly deeply engage kids and support their learning. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, and for me, if there's anything that I can do, I, I don't speak for anybody else on this board, except I only speak for myself. I think I'm always willing to be any kind of voice for that partnership, because I, I think it's so important that, uh, you know, I look at the work that we're doing and how long it takes, how much effort that we're putting into educating our children, making sure that they're college ready, but there's always going to be a missing piece that is going to follow these children into adulthood if we don't have the partnership, the buying and the accountability for parents as well. So for me, if it's about uh, bringing the message, you know, through my own social media networks and whatnot, I'm definitely willing to do that. But I do think that that is important, um, really not just giving information, but also empowering our parents to be able to use that information for the development of their kids. Very well stated. Um, Ms. Thank you, Chairman. Um, <clears throat> obviously, I agree with everything that Ms. Castillo said and support um, her um, desire initiatives 100% of what it is she's wanting to do. Uh, the reason I had raised my hand was to mention, as I often do, just the importance of this area of our work. Um, you know, we know that we're not a silo in the community, but that <clears throat> we're interwoven throughout the community. And so the more that we can do to, <clears throat> excuse me, the more that we can do to bring people alongside of the work we're doing, the better off we are. Um, you know, this board, you know, we said at the beginning of the meeting just how how proud we are to work with one another and work with the team that we do. And and I think part of that is because we understand that the more effective we are in governing, um, the better decisions we're able to make, the better culture we're able to build, um, the more buy-in we're able to create, and the more synergy across our community we're able to develop. And And I think as we sit today and as we think about this upcoming year um, that has and years i should say that has to continue to be an emphasis um, and we know that one of the most significant things in a student's life and journey in in learning and growing and expanding in the area of their education is parent involvement um, and you guys have heard me say over and over and over again and i apologize for repeating it but i believe it's so so true that I feel like I have to say it all the time is that education starts in the home. And the more we can do to um, integrate ourselves into the community and vice versa, have the community integrate our, themselves into what we do, it's vitally important. And, and you know, obviously in, in all of that, I'm primarily speaking about parents and engagement. And, and let's be honest, it's a very difficult thing. Um, I, like all of you, have hosted forums and um, presentations and workshops and, um, I mean, fairs. I mean, I've done all these things over the last eight years um, across the community, try to do as much as I can to bring parents to the table and to expose them uh, to the vast amount of resources we have available. And it's difficult, you know, you put together all, uh, initiatives and offers and uh, you have staff and time and energy and all that that goes into it. And sometimes you have a limited turnout. I think the encouragement from that needs to be though that we don't give up. We don't take our foot off the gas and we continue to innovate around the challenges that we find in front of us. Um, but outside of the area of our parents, which we know are incredibly important, um, this board and superintendent have been laser focused on making sure we build the partnerships across the community as a whole, uh, our faith-based communities, um, our business community, um, our nonprofit community, um, and the list goes on. And so um, this area is and will be a, a vital part of what we do in order to achieve success and also to have the right um, connection um, and communication with our community because trust between us as an elected body and them as the uh, constituents that we serve is, is incredibly important as well. And so we've been incredibly open and accessible and transparent. Um, and I think that's created a lot of the success that we've had. 
but I know that it needs to continue. And I know you guys, none of us really ever miss an opportunity to acknowledge Dana and her team um, and the work that they do. Um, I'll just say again, I, I, my, my life is richly blessed because Dana is a part of it, but my time as a school board member has been blessed because of the work that she does, has done, and I know will continue to do. And I think um, the, the more that we can recognize the, the hard work and the sweat and the love that they pour into the work they do, the better off we all are. So um, Ms. Castillo, I agree with you 100% and I'll support um, all of the things that you're talking about because I know it's important for our success. Very well stated, Mr. Weisdyer. I'm going to check hands really quick. And um, I'm going to take a few moments. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Booth, I, I just want to say 100% agree uh, <laughs> with you. I, I don't need to make any more statement than that. Uh, I think Ms. Castillo and Mr. Weiss are, are um, right on point. Excellent. So um, I'm going to take a few moments to, to comment as well. Um, well, of course, I was paying attention carefully to what my fellow board members were saying. I was not formulating any response. So I'm going to go ahead and do this as it comes along. It's very impromptu, but I too reflect upon the time that I've served on the school district and when I think about a lot of the things that I've seen improved, um, one of the things, the aspect, and I want to speak specifically about goal for engagement and governance. Um, I've always felt that that was something that was just without it, all of the other pieces, whether they be fiscal responsibility or the other things that we do, including providing the a quality system would be extremely hard to achieve. The public education system of our society, at least in, at least from my studies and what I realize and understand in America, it's really the most important source of hope for a good future, for a strong nation, for 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 peace and prosperity and for and for opportunity for everyone, whoever they may be, or from wherever they came from. And so when I think of go for and governance and I reflect again, I share this probably closely with um with Mr. Weisire. Um we've been serving since 2012 and like every good service as an official, things have a beginning and an end. But I see the improvement that the school district has done in this area, and this in my opinion, in it's just been striking. And where we were when I first got elected to where we are now. One of the things that I want to, and, and I'll end really, really quickly, but I want to think that a lot of a lot of people in this community in Osage County, um, they they really aren't used to having a voice in the process of their student. I know that school boards do not exist in Puerto Rico. I'm going to tell you that right now. If they do, it must be a very recent development. And I know that in a lot of other parts of the country, a lot of other countries, you know, internationally, you know, even if they do have school boards, um, just how much would they know about it? County is that folks have a learned about their voice through their school board members and through a very um, encouraging and open school district that they do have a voice and they could be heard and they can have input and they can have collaboration and they can have engage and there's engagement. And that's something that I hope will never stop. I hope that our efforts in this kind of goal will continue that we use creativity. Um, that we, we come up with ideas that excite the, the community, the Osceola County community, whether it be um, parents, um, whether it be um, other um, our vendors, our other stakeholders, other other offices, to continue to see this for what it is, and that is really the the most important and the, and the strongest source of hope for a future for our community. And we've been doing a good job of that. It's been a privilege and a great honor to been part of it. To the to the extent that I have contributed in this regard, I uh, fortunate and um, and really I think that. Um, that's probably a lot of what Mr. Weissar, Ricky, and and Terry has said, but I don't want 
lost from where we came from and where we are. And um, I really do um, congratulate everyone in this app. That's it for my comment. I'm going to check for hands real quick. And seeing none, Dr. Pace, would you please take us to goal number five? Yes, sir. And as we transition to goal number five, I just wanted to share with you that Dana's team is already working on our communication plan and our communication strategy for our back to school plan. I sent you all an example of the link last week um, that we are going to use to create some window clings just to remind people of the importance of screening before they come into school or work and what healthy habits really are all about. And I look forward to bringing that forward as well. We know that one of our um, challenges moving forward is going to be restoring confidence in both our families and our staff members that we are taking the steps necessary to keep people safe at school. And our community engagement governance goal is going to be hugely responsible for that because we're going to be relying on all of you as well as governing board members to help us share that message. So look, look forward to that as, as a next step for goal four. That brings us then to goal five, our safety and security goal. Um, it continues to be a priority, both in terms of the physical safety for our students and staff members and our facility security procedures and infrastructure, but also as, as well as in that social and emotional and mental safety for our students and staff members, even during challenging times. And that would be goal 5B. So I have just a few highlights to share with you in this particular area. We have installed our safer space stickers district wide. So we have been able to identify corners, classrooms and classrooms, uh, specific angles from the door where students and staff members know that they would go in the event of a crisis when we needed to lock down and prevent anyone from the outside from looking in. I will also share with you that windows have been covered with the film that allows people to see out but not in. Um, as another safety measure and all of our classroom doors ac across the, the campus, a uh, campuses across the district. Our next step for that is front door wraps. Um, we had a great idea from Kissimmee Elementary School, David Noyes did it last year, where he used the new symbols that we had come up with as emblems and, and um, their uh, school logos. Sorry, for some reason I lost my mind there for a minute. Um, used his logo to uh, adorn his front door uh, it takes not a whole lot of money, but it not only is a way to improve culture and marketing for the school, but also to address a safety issue. Because again, people from the inside can see out, but people from the inside, outside don't have that direct line of sight in. I am proud to report that 100% of our district and charter schools submitted their facade by the state's deadline. Uh, that window has opened up again. It's an annual requirement, and we're going to continue to be sure that we meet those guidelines. Our school counselors and our social workers have not only provided services throughout the school year, but even during digital learning, they have been reaching out to students and families for who were receiving mental health services and support prior to the closure to continue to provide that ongoing support, even if we had to do so through the digital world. All of our students in the elementary school did participate in the required instruction on human tra trafficking and substance abuse, the new state board rule that went into effect last July. And I'm also pleased to say that all of our students in grades 6 through 12 participated in the required instruction on mental health awareness and suicide prevention through purpose prep. Fortunately, they had done that by February so that we didn't have any kinds of issues on that. We've also made improvements that you will note in, in, in the handbook that I gave you, the overall guide for fencing, camera improvements, storefront locks. 100% um, of my leadership team uh, completed the six hour required training for youth mental health first aid, and we're rolling that out across the district. And I'm also pleased to report that a part of our back to learning task force um, task will be to also look at what additional social and emotional supports we may need to put in place, particularly as we welcome new students and, and families back to school or returning students and families back to school um, after we've, we've not had the opportunity to engage physically with them in some time. So that's a big piece of that as we move forward. All right, very well. I am. Um... I am um, Dr. Pace. I don't see any board member. With um, with their hands asking for an opportunity question, I certainly. One other thing that I could share, Chairman Soto, with the board is that I believe we are finalizing our contracts for school resource officers district wide, for both the sheriff's department, St. Cloud PD, and City of Kissimmee PD, 
as well moving forward. So we're right in line to maintain um, a school resource officer in, in every school to have both that relationship piece as well as the safety that's required by the state law. That is very, very encouraging. Thank you for that update, um, Dr. Pace. Mr. Weisire, I see your hand. Thank you. I actually didn't raise my hand earlier because I wanted to make sure other board members had a chance to just comment on this. I, I'll be very brief. So important, such good work done, um, and this board and this district is laser focused on ensuring that school safety and security is of paramount importance and a priority in everything we do, and I'm grateful for our team. That's it. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Mr. Weissire. Um, all right, so, is there anything you want to conclude with the workshop? Well, I would just like to say again a tremendous thank you to the board for your your guidance, your leadership, your support uh, throughout the year. As as Mr. Weissire mentioned, it we don't want to lose sight of the fact that we had done some amazing work uh, for the first three quarters of the year, and we're going to hit the ground running again in August. I want to say thank you again to my entire team, our assistant superintendents, everybody on my leadership team, our directors, our coordinators, our resource teachers, our school staff, our school administrators, everybody has really rallied together and is committed and focused to the strategic plan that you've laid out for us. So I look forward to perhaps some individual conversations with each of you about any additional strategies, um, outcome measures you'd like to see, and of course, any of the questions that you had throughout the conversation. My team was tasked with taking careful notes and we will follow up next week to make sure that that information is provided to you. That's all I have, sir. Thank you, Dr. Pace. Board, is there anything um, on any of the goals, any final comments or questions or anything you want to discuss before we adjourn this meeting? Um, Mr. Weissire, you have the floor. Thank you. Just a comment for the superintendent and staff to know that um, although the board may be sitting here today and not offering a lot of additional comment or commentary on what it is, uh, we want to see or what it is we want to focus on and i've said this i think for the last couple of years is just know that um where you guys live deep inside of a lot of these things all day um, sometimes for us it takes a little bit of time for us to kind of think through and process okay now that we've heard this we've had the, the stock take we've had the update what is it that we want to do and so i said say i uh, recognize this isn't and shouldn't be a one and done conversation and board members uh, should and will continue to think through where are there opportunities and strategies that we should be thinking about and superintendent as you know our one-on-one -on -one conversations are incredibly important to that and um, the time that we spend with you to unpack things and talk through things and just to uh, throw some conversations around and see where things land are always helpful. I know they're helpful to me personally. I've, I imagine they're helpful to all of my peers, um, but just know that and particularly this goes to the, the leadership team that's listening and watching is um, if there's something that we haven't missed, and, and I'll say it this way, if there's something that we've missed or we haven't mentioned, remember sometimes we don't know what we don't know. And so um, help us continue to learn and grow and understand maybe there's something that we should be thinking about that we hadn't thought about yet. So um, for me, this is a, a review and a touch point, but it's it's one of a few pieces of making sure that we get this right. So. Good. Very good. Um, thank you, Mr. Weissire. All right. And so with no one else um, indicating a desire to say anything else, I will adjourn this meeting. See you guys at 3 p.m. today. Thank you.